All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got your watch list coming in in July 3rd, 2019, and it's going to be a half day on the market as the market is closed on Friday, but tomorrow we're closing around 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern because of the holidays. So God bless America. Shout out all of our troops, the vets, and make sure you guys enjoy this weekend and take some time off. Enjoy your families, friends, study, whatever it is you want to do, but have fun. Understand why we have this holiday. I'd love it. I love you guys. Appreciate everybody who has subscribed, commenting. So wait, make sure you guys post your watch list below. Drop a thumbs up if you like this video. But honestly, shout out all the people who have been subscribed. YouTube is giving me data on how many of you guys are on the notifications and all that. So shout out my notification gang. I love you guys. It's good to see. I, I have a better idea of who I'm making content for. And thank you to everybody who gave me feedback on how they want to see these videos. So I'm going to begin now with the keys for the day. We're going to talk about what happened today because it was honestly crazy if you guys were on the stream you saw a lot of stuff a lot of people freaking out even all across all the news networks there was a bunch of different things that occurred so i want to talk about that go over the keys for tomorrow and discuss what has happened here the stock market has done a few things today that it has not done in years the first thing is related to oil and the next thing is related to bonds you guys see that i just recorded uh a very very long everything talking about it and it somehow hit mute so there you guys go i have to give you the rundown i'm very very sad about that but hey it's just like the markets oh you're gonna get disappointed but you got to get back on it so we are going to be trading live 30 minutes before open make sure you are subscribed i didn't know people didn't know how to find this click on this video first link in the description it's going to be right there or pinned in the comments and by this video i mean this video you're watching now we better see you there in the morning but simply the things that have happened that have not occurred in years one oil this was the worst opec meeting since 2014 and by that it means the result on oil it dropped around four or five percent today you guys could see that here it came back down to the level around 56 we were at 60 if it goes down below 54 that puts us right into the spot that we were at and remember this is what i've been saying wait for the processing time of all of this because now oil is going to come back down and then the next thing that happened today the bond rates this is the lowest the bonds have been and they're dropping even more right now since 2016 and this is what i was saying watch out for and watch out for the double down because now the bonds are doubling down on the move from g20 the one and everything i showed you it's already reversed back to those levels so that is what we need to keep our eyes on for but all that stuff occurred i wanted to show you i went into a deep explanation with stuff but we're gonna have to make it quick here keys for tomorrow watch volume it's gonna be a short day and a lot of people are expecting people to be outside of the market and it is true but the bond market is telling me otherwise because that is not your retail traders when it's making those moves like it did today and then if it does continue we'll see what happens but as Essentially, the volume is going to confirm if there's any big move in what's going on. What you need to be looking for is the scale. Even if it's a short day, you have to see if there is large volume. And then this could be affected by everything that happened. I'm going to go over the timeline to explain it here. But the only thing that could really affect the market is going to have to have a large scale. You know, shout out the stock trading boot camp, equal and opposite reactions, baby. And that's why I said black swan. And that's kind of what we were thinking today. Uh, and why I say that is because a lot of what happened today was unexpected. We'll go over that. But then lastly, three feet to gold, my friend. A lot of things are brewing here, uh, whether it's here now or whether it comes later, whether you're trading, whether you're discouraged, whatever it may be, things are starting to brew up there. And again, be careful not to listen too fast. Control yourself, man, and paper trade at the same time. I'm not saying go throw all your money in right now. If you're, you know, you're right there, don't give up. Just keep going. No, be smart about it in paper trade. Again, learn in this difficult market. You guys got to understand it's better to be late than wrong. So the timeline for today, this is what caused this crazy reaction. And the issue was it started here at 1130. That is when the European closed. And really a lot of stuff happened. And you have to understand most of this was unconfirmed. I'm giving you guys a timeline. I'm going to tell you what I think about it. But there was the Trump lawsuit pretty much a minute later then. The, the Trump lawsuit was the Democrats for the tax returns. Then a minute later... Pence's plane turns around. Some say the plane never left. Some say that he was there and there was a, a potential active shooter or some threat. Then that went away. They said it was just gunshots, but he canceled the meeting, came back to the White House. They said it was for an emergency, but then the White House said it's not a cause or concern, but we don't know yet. Nothing has been confirmed there. And then next, there was people saying the EU Security Council had a meeting after that, but there's no such thing as the EU Security Council. There's a UN Security Council, but then people are saying, oh, it was the, the Bank of England Council Council was meeting and that was to appoint the new bank um the bank of england to replace mario draghi or the ecb and they did select christine lagarde the former imf chair 
but I don't think that would have caused the move. But again, this is where it starts to get interesting as we move into the next one, because then shortly after, and this is, I'm telling you, this is all within a one hour period, uh, literally. And even before that, then you started seeing oil and a lot of stuff happen. But then Putin cancels a meeting and he has a security meeting with one of his deputies. And that's where it starts to get interesting. And then there was also a, a submarine accident happened about 14 or 18 hours earlier. And I think 14 people died. It was the worst submarine accident in Russia since 2008. So this had weight because it was a nuclear sub. It was a research sub. They said it's docked, but... I was thinking, okay, if there's a nuclear reactor on board or nuclear fuel, and a lot of people, all the reports confirmed that wasn't the case, but that could have been, like I'm saying, a black swan. But all in all, none of this is confirmed. We still don't know what happened, but the thing that caught my attention, I think you could visibly see it in the markets. People were waiting, and they, a lot of people were confused, and hopefully you guys saw. I was telling people, I said, don't panic, wait. I'll tell you when to panic on it, because in scale, the move today wasn't that big, but they, you could have panicked. You guys have seen me buy puts on way less. And that's why I'm saying, you know, you got something here. The minute we were able to confirm it, it could have really gave us something, but you didn't want to be too jumpy because look at, you know, we could pull up even the UVXY. This thing skyrocketed, came back down, and again, all the behavior was very, very weird. But this was this was awesome to see today. You got confusion, and I'm this is what I'm excited for because now it was crazy to see how fearful people got here, and there was volatility. This is a true cat dog. I'm telling you, not only in the sense of what happened to stocks, but people's opinions. You had people pulling left and right because even the people who were bullish, they, they were still little, you know, it was a weird confusion after words but then you got to see how people responded to prices when it was coming down they gave a lot more weight to all the news and people were like wait what's happening security this and that and then as it went up it started as the price was going up it was very easy to say oh that was nothing or this or that you're getting a big big push and pull in opinions and that is the cat dog my friend so that's where it got gets you know all of us getting interesting the fact that all three nations these large nations have said something with security and national security that's where it got worrisome but then it started to make sense israel dropped bombs on syria last night that wasn't the main point but then they pretty much said they're getting ready for a potential like, attack with iran or for u.s escalations and then iran said if the I, if the u.s attacks them they will destroy israel in 30 minutes and then israel said they'll attack on their own because iran violated the uranium agreements and now this is where it gets a cause for concern this could open up Pandora's box and even China. Uh, they've said that before and they warned the U.S. They clapped back today and said, hey, you know, don't you know, they're, they're adding too much pressure and they encourage them not to open this door up because this could be a problem. But it makes sense. Israel. And even as we've talked about in the past, and this is what I'm saying, Black Swan, even when we had the Iran oil tanker stuff, I was saying that was unexpected. You saw what it did to oil. And now we're seeing what happened to oil even today after hours with a big draw in the crude. It didn't even bring oil back up. But the key with all of this is that now Iran has said they just want, you know, they, they don't want to attack anybody. They, Like I said, they're really defensive, not really attacking. But by ramping up this nuclear stuff, this kind of turns them from a gray state to a red state, meaning, you know, they're kind of in the middle. They would have arms for maybe deterrent, but now they're kind of holding it in a position where you know, ring a red state is just a little bit more active and that's where it brings concern. So I think that's it. But again, here's the thing. A lot of this was unconfirmed. The market going up leaves everybody even more con and more unconfirmed in everything, which I love. I have my opinion. I think it's going to be Iran related and it's something of that nature, but we truly do not know. It could be a plethora of things, but the best part is bonds are going down. The gold is ripping. And again, Trump announced today, this is it helped boost gold after hours. He, he appointed two people to the board of directors for the Fed. And one of them was this lady who wrote a book in 1998, something on like the collapse of money. And she just hates central banks for the most part. She would talk some smack on it. But this lady is a huge fan of 0% interest rates and the gold standard. So gold went up. The markets like that, or at least the, the metals markets did. But that's pretty interesting considering the scope of everything and now having them on board. I can't wait to see what goes on from there. But seeing everything that went down, there was a lot that occurred, especially at the timing. This is even happened 1130 when the European markets closed. So it was hard to attribute certain things. But considering the nature of the news, we have to wait. It's just weird. And now coming into the holiday weekend, we have to watch. But if the bonds keep making a move, I've been saying, wait for this processing and they start to move down. That is going to give us a whole different outlook and picture of everything. So let me know what you guys think. I would love to hear your opinion. What do you think it is? If you guys could confirm any news, post it. 
we only want to be effective here if it's blah 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 this or that you know give your opinion with some facts if you want to fear monger or anything else that's not the point here even in general like i said today the markets were coming down and i was really really interested in the news and understanding we didn't need to make a play and it wasn't saying you know do this or that and again all of these things are diverging like i've said even people's opinions this is going to create an opportunity one thing's going to converge or not but lastly let me show you guys what i want to give you with bond rates I showed this on stream the other day and people really liked it. So, you know, why is there such an importance when it comes to the bond rates? This is what I want to show you guys with how they're operating and, and all of the different signals that it's going to be giving us. But also so because there's other assets doing this related to the convergence, but the bonds are very, very important. So take a look here. This is from 2016, 2015. You could even see, look at that. Bonds are coming down. Market comes down. 2016, till some point bonds were going down up until and again they crashed even more with brexit that's where again more political concerns there they they didn't go up just like they did and the market did actually have its own move there but then they started to go up the market trailed with it this is 27 that that's that little dump there then 2017 there's november trump gets elected markets go up and then you see even up until now 2018 bond rates are going up markets going up 2018 they come down a little bit market comes down a little bit the bonds didn't move as much bond rates rip up market does the same thing and then this is where we get into 2019 starting november bond rates start to drop the market starts to drop a market bounces in january the bonds have not done that yet the bonds went up a little bit yet and now they've kept plummeting and the market is up that's a huge divergence and i'll show you another one but this is important and again understanding the rush to safety and what these means we've talked about it a lot if you have a question on bonds comment it below but i think that'd be a good visual and could help you out so let us get into the plays right off the bat i like the uvxy this isn't the main one i wanted to look at but this is the one i left here on the screen it's going to be important again showing you the pricing and all that because now this is showing you things got cheaper here and this is why i'm saying you wait for confirmation you let some of these headlines move you know jerk the volatility it could get you some pretty good entry prices but i like them the big thing i wanted to focus on symantec and broadcom avgo symantec is in talks to get bought out that's what uh broadcom announced today if you guys remember i said this about six to seven months ago i said symantec was a buyout target i thought it would be from facebook but they still got bought out. So even then, watch the other competitors. There's going to be FireEye and Cyber, which I like. But watch these tomorrow. Symantec went up, obviously. Broadcom went down. But with the low volume in the holiday and anything, we could see that these could be those movers tomorrow and how they, they play out. And even, again, through the weeks, we've seen other plays related to buyouts and how they've been able to show us stuff. So keep your eye out for that. And then, again, related to some of these divergencies. I mean, watch TLT. This is showing you the bond move. I'm up like 40 or 50% on my butterfly, which is too shocking. Again, that's why I got time. And that played less than 100 bucks. So I'm not making too much on it. But it got me August, and now, you know, it could really start to ramp up here if the bonds start doing stuff. But TLT was just giving us signals all morning, even straight from the, the, the get-go. And the fact that, again, bonds have doubled down since G20, that is not something I think we ignore. But it's only been a few days. Just as quickly as things could come up or come down, they could come right back up. So watch for that situation to reverse. But if it doesn't, that is a very, very clear sign. But lastly, IYT Transports. They got crushed today. Watch for, again, they have a divergence even with the SPY, if you could see it. And I even did, I showed the same thing on IWM today. You're seeing divergences, and, and this is what you want. And again, they don't have to always converge instantly. There's a reason why they look like this. So it's going to take some time. But watch that in general. Airlines, FedEx, uh, airlines were up today, went down, then came back up. Uh, they had a crazy move, but FedEx and UPS are also getting clobbered. But that could also, any transports could be related to oil and anything of that nature. So watch those. I like those. Next, UNH. And in general, UNH, Biogen, Anthem, Cigna, Healthcare. I said watch for the rotation. They went double the, the move of the market. Market went up a quarter percent. They went up about half a percent. But they are important if we do get that rotational element. It's kind of like the value stocks, which I really, really like. So keep your guys' eyes out for that. The next play, this is the only play I made today besides selling out a call. Raytheon, and again, I like the longer term chart here. I don't like the fact that it could get muddied with that deal with UTX, but they're looking really weak. I bought the option... I got a August 155 for 107. And if we go to the chain, 
even after that big move and i think uh after hours it said it dropped like two bucks but even then they're still worth uh you know 84 is the last trade but there's a huge spread so I, i'm i'm surprised i didn't lose more but i think it's just making sense there's a lot of caution in it and the iv is decently high but it's still decently low and i think that could be related to the deal and just the nature of the stock but i like it i had to go small i only got one play but this is fairly big you know to put a hundred on there uh, just, you know, that's, you have to put a lot there with the spreads to get something decent. But if that play develops, it's not looking good, uh, even compared to Lockheed. You could look at Boeing, but you could also look at NOC and any other defense stocks. Pretty much the ones with problems or unique info, like, again, Buyout or Boeing, they're getting clobbered. So I think it's just showing you something's unique when defense is also going up. Then lastly, Disney. Watch. They're, they're there. I want to set them up for earnings. I said yesterday, watch those uh, plays that we sold out of, and I think they're already up 50%. Uh, or down 50% from two weeks ago. So the calls are, you know, they're still a little juice, but not as much as they were. But I think this could be a good earnings play, and I want to start setting up for it. But you need to watch how it trades in the mornings uh, and even throughout the day. Does it do an inverse to the market or not? Market was struggling. It went up. As the market started to go up, it didn't do the same. And as you can see, it didn't get that same pop and bounce there at the end. But I like them. I want to see if we could set up a play and what could come from there. And lastly, we got Boeing. I would talk about this last it, the fact is it hit three 352 yesterday or today where it goes from here is important calls and puts on the weekly are down but i said i'm gonna be chasing this stock and going through i already have plays throughout the weekly next week to august september earnings i think that's when we'll see the move but we want to watch how it plays out before then but if it goes below 352 with support or with strength that'll be bad or again last time it just gapped straight to 347 and 342 when it was at these levels so be cautious here but i like it but the weeklies are going to be a lot harder to play however i, I still think the grass the glass is cracking it is just going to know when is it really going to hit that breaking point but again don't underestimate the ability for that thing to bounce Next, HHC, uh, and you guys can see on the option chain, I had that up earlier. I like this one a lot. Remember, just the buyout concerns a few days ago, I said, wait till the hype dies down. And I believe the contracts have gone down like three to 400% since then. If you look at them, somebody, I think this is a cult member right here. You got them at 25 cents. I think it's decent. I just want more time. So again, it's just hard with the bids and ask. So I'm going to be looking for August uh, and October. If I could get some of these for cheap, it will be good, but it's so hard to play on the spreads. You could tell with the asks and where the last trades are at, but try to get time. But I, I still think this is a good one to watch, especially especially now watch for buyouts even with Symantec again look at FireEye and Cyber usually when one happens you might see these deals come in twos like we've seen but again sometimes when the market low volume or if there is any events these stocks that people know what's going to happen they could be getting the volume in the trades so watch out for that and lastly what we said watch the value stocks McDonald's so we made that play yesterday I showed you guys that here on the watch list that one went up about 500 percent I sold out of one of them and I kept the other so it was like 26 bucks 32 dollars after commission and I sold one of them for 40 so eight dollar net profit in a free contract but even today I was I had it here it was at 32 cents I didn't sell it out because 32 was the the price after commissions came down to 25 I checked the price after commissions I would have got 16 bucks and someone's like wait you're not going to sell it over five dollars I said no because it would just be getting me break even so good thing I did you could attribute this to luck or whatever it is but as you guys see this is why I go for the value stocks even when I'm getting puts or anything else think about the types of plays that we're making if i do get weighted there i could get stuff like value stocks or exposure on the upside and getting some decent high risk high rewards could do good so i didn't like the 210 at first now i'm liking them i'm gonna watch to see be careful to see tomorrow if it briefly pops over 210 and comes down or, or again i think setting up till friday that could be a big move and then come be careful of the next weeks but if it does get gas and steam that's going to be good but watch that as an inverse or even a frog play so i'm gonna leave it there guys make sure you are subscribed post your watch list get ready and enjoy your holiday get, i better see you there in the morning and then you can enjoy your holiday all right let's go <laughs>